Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to the Wear OS version of OctoApp. In the next couple of minutes, I want to give you a quick overview of what to pay attention to and how things work with the new Wear OS version of OctoApp. This will be a little bit unscripted, so I will just uh, go ahead and show you everything here on my uh, computer, and you can just follow along. And yeah, I guess that's it. Let's start. <laughs> Uh, you see on your left my Octoprint test instance, and on the right you see a Wear OS emulator and an Android emulator. It's a bit easier for me to show you everything with the emulator compared to a real device, so that's why we go ahead and do it like this now. So, firstly, before we start, please be aware that as of the moment of recording here, uh, the Wear OS version is still in beta. Um, this means there can be bugs and there will be issues. So, there's a huge disclaimer, which you can acknowledge and uh, then just close by selecting understood. And that brings you already to the main screen of the Octo app version, uh, of the Wear OS version. Um, let's quickly jump to the last tabs. You see you have those tabs on the bottom which uh, reflect all your instances. So if you only have one Octo print, there will be only one tab. In this case, I have set up five. <laughs> so um, the last tab is always settings. And settings is not really settings. Um, if you scroll down, you see that basically only options you have is FAQ and report a bug. And that's basically it because the settings are completely synced from the phone. There's nothing you need to do. So as soon as you change the setting on your phone, it will be synced over to the Wear OS app. Um, that also means if you add a new Octoprint, it will be synced automatically. I can show you this in a second, but I quickly wanted to highlight the report a bug feature here. So if you have an issue with the Wear OS app, you can just click report a bug and you will see on your phone there will be a notification. And if you open that, it will bring you to Gmail or whatever your browser is, um, your, your email app is. And you can send a bug report directly from here. This will attach automatically the data zip file here, which contains the logs of the app. Um, if you ever report the bug for the main Octo app, that's exactly the same. So yeah, just quick shout out um, to, to this uh, small little button there uh, that will be very helpful, I guess. Cool. Okay. Then let's quickly jump actually into OctoApp on the phone here. Um, you see, we have the five uh, different uh, yeah, instances here. And just as example, if I, for example, go ahead, click edit and I remove this weird one here. Yeah, you saw it in the background, basically one point just disappeared. So it syncs really live um, it's instantly. Uh, one thing you need to be aware of is that that sync for some reason, and that's something Google can maybe answer you, I can't, um, it needs to be connected via the internet. So basically both devices need network access and internet access for the sync to work. Uh, so for example, if you are offline for some reason, the sync won't work. That's just, it's a bit weird, but just as a hint. The next thing I want to point to is actually this little uh, symbol on top next to the Octoprint name. Um, there are quite a couple of symbols that can show up here. And of course, I started with the last one. Okay, so this one is what you see at the moment here. And that means basically that OctoApp is not connected. So it's just disconnected. It's quite straightforward. When you see that, uh, you see also on the bottom it says uh, reconnecting. So that's not really uh, how it, yeah, it's just disconnected. The next one is this Wi Fi symbol, which means connected. Um, so it's quite straightforward as well. But um, it's not really Wi Fi, it's a bit of a lie. The reason is that uh, Wear OS devices, um, let's say like you only have your watch with you. Um, it will connect via Wi-Fi to the internet, or if you have 4G model, via 4G. But as soon as your phone is with you, the watch will actually send all the network traffic via Bluetooth to the phone, and the phone will use its network connection to uh, connect to the world. Um, so although it says Wi-Fi here, it can very well be that it's actually using Bluetooth and then the phone's network connection. The third option is the Bluetooth symbol. So what does that mean? You just said like, the Wi-Fi is Bluetooth. Okay, so this Bluetooth symbol means that um, the Wear OS app is connected via the Octo app Bluetooth connection. Um, there's a bit of weird things going on with Wear OS, where when the app is used, the, the Wear OS watch is using the phone's Bluetooth, or like the phone's network connection via Bluetooth, 
it can't access the local network, which is super weird. Again, I can't tell you why, maybe Google can. Um, but it basically means that if the watch wants to access the local network, I have to tunnel the network traffic through my own Bluetooth connection. And that's what this symbol means. So if you see this Bluetooth symbol, that means you're using the Octo app, Bluetooth tunnel. Um, the next one is this little nifty cloud symbol, which means basically you're connected via the cloud. Um, so if you set up in Octo app, like an uh, alternative network connection, um, then this symbol will basically tell you that it's using the public connection or the, the, the fallback connection. Uh, just to clarify, you can always go to Octoprint and then configure remote access. And if you see this cloud symbol, that would basically mean you used the manual setup tab uh, to set something up manually. Um, and if it's using that connection, you see the cloud symbol on top. Um, straightforward, it's Octo Everywhere symbol, it means it uses Octo Everywhere at the moment to connect. Uh, we also have the Obico, or it used to be the Spaghetti Detective until a couple of weeks ago. Sorry for the pixelated icons here. <laughs> uh, so that means that it uses the Obico tunnel, um, N for the Ngrok, or it's the Ngrok symbol, so it uses the Ngrok tunnel, uh, tail scale, so that's all quite straightforward. Um, so those are basically all the symbols you can see here on, on top next to the name. Um, so for example, you see now it's just switched to the Charlotte instance, and uh, now you see that there's this uh, tail scale symbol. And actually like looking at now, right now, I think there's something going wrong with that symbol. Okay, now, yeah. But now you see Octopi is connected. You have the Wi-Fi symbol on top. Um, and yeah, you can start using the app. And yeah, let's basically explore the app. And it works pretty much like the main Octoprint, uh, the main Octo app. So if you used Octo app for a while, you know that there are those like three bubbles on top, which is basically three workspaces, as I call them. So it's a connect, prepare, and print. Mm. The Wear OS app works exactly the same, but it's not as expressive. So it doesn't tell you in which workspace you are, but under the hood, they are basically the same. So if you put them next to each other, let me just like arrange it a bit, uh, you see that basically both apps show the start print option at the moment. So they are in the prepare workspace. And if you scroll down in the Wear OS app, you will always have more things. Um, basically, as soon as you see this like down arrow, you see, yeah, you can scroll down. So you see here we have the webcam, which is a beautiful section of my ceiling. And let's see if the main app dares to load it. It's all a bit finicky with uh, <laughs> my test setup. But yeah, you see on the Wear OS app it works. And basically you see this like countdown circle. And that means basically uh, it gives you the time until the next image is loaded. Um, on the Wear OS devices, we need to be very, very careful with uh, battery life and performance. So that's why we only have one image every five seconds, if I recall correctly. Three or five. Um, and that's kind of a fixed value here. And also what's important, as soon as the webcam image is moved out of view, so for example, if I scroll back up, the app will stop loading images. So no webcam image is loaded if the webcam isn't visible. So now you see uh, the circle was full, and then it took like a couple of milliseconds to, to start loading again. And that's the webcam. If you scroll down further, you will see the temperatures. And that basically reflects one-to-one -one what you have in the main Octo app on top. Um, some people might have noticed that um, there are now more options since Octoprint 1.8 for some printers that will all show up here. Um, you can also change that. So if we just click here, you will have this keyboard input where you, for example, can set it to 80 degrees. We'll give you like the check mark. And now you see it refreshed here and in a second, yeah, should go up. Mm, just as information, this is a virtual printer. So there's no real printer right now connected. That's why like the temperature goes up like super fast and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so that's the temperatures. And below that you have quick access. And for everyone that contains the temperature presets, so that's basically what you can reach from the little fire symbol here. Um, and what you have here on the dots, like it's the same as you have here. So preheat, hot end, bed, or chamber. 
and then basically below that you would have your power devices. Uh, so I guess most people have that set up because it's quite handy. Um, I will also make a separate video about how to set this up in the future. Um, but basically you can connect power devices via some plugins to Octoprint and Octo will pick most of them up. So if we go here to lights, you can see you can control the lights in various ways. <clears throat> and if you pay attention here behind me, yay, we can turn on and off lights. So it's like this little thing on the side. Um, and yeah, this specific plugin, it's the IKEA plugin for the IKEA power de uh, smart devices. And it has a very weird issue that when you turn off a light, it will disconnect the printer. That's what you saw just here. But yeah, you can control the devices. Uh, you can open Octoprint, which will kick back to your phone. Um, and system commands, if you have that set up, it's yeah to shut down your Octoprint, reboot it, etc. So that's all things you have access from here. Mm, and just like the main app, things will be available or like hidden or shown depending on the current state. So for example, if we now start printing, you will see that you actually have the full file list on your watch, which is pretty cool, I think. So let's do just the same thing here in parallel. Um, it's obviously much smaller, so there's not as much information, but you see you have the My Project folder in both. Uh, so you can open that and you will see the content of that folder. So that works just the same. And below you just have the, the files here. Mm, when you open a file in the main app, you will always see the details. You will see G-code render, right in the preview tab, you can, you can look at the render of that thing. But on the watch, that's just not possible. Uh, maybe in the future, I will add some information here, but for now, basically, when you select something, it will go straight go ahead and ask you, hey, do you want to print that? And you have two options, but let's start a print and it takes a second for everything to settle. Oh, actually, yeah, because you opened it manually, it doesn't progress, but yeah. So here you now see the print state. Um, you see the phone moved on to the print workspace. The f app, or like the, the watch did as well, but it doesn't tell you explicitly. So if you scroll down with the webcam, but now you have new options, you have pause and cancel. If you just do it quickly, everything is kind of protected. So you always have to confirm your actions. Um, yeah, you see like the phone instantly went to pause. We are paused here, 7%. Again, it's a virtual printer, so it's, it's hyper fast. <laughs> um, but you can also cancel. Uh, let's resume for now. Oh, that was the wrong icon. Small bug there. Um, but yeah, you see it like resumed. And we see now the temperatures updates, right? So we can also change the temperature here. Let's say like we changed to 200. And you will see 200 target on the phone. So that's all working nicely. And yeah, that's basically the print state. Um, let's actually quickly cancel that. Okay, I need to check it out with the cloud. Again, like it's a beta, like small things like that will happen here and there. Um, but overall, it works pretty well. Like I'm using it since a couple of weeks now uh, in, in various stages of development. And it's actually, it's very nice. I love it. Um, cool. But yeah, that's basically, I think the most important part. Um, what I can also show you, uh, let me actually quickly close the app here. You can of course also connect your printer. I just have to quickly fake that because that's kind of plugging the, the <laughs> virtual printer out of the Octoprint instance. Uh, so if we disconnect, so you will see that the app will jump into the uh, connect state. You basically see that uh, Octoprint is connected and we're waiting for a printer to be connected. Um, and that basically means a physical uh, connection. So let's imagine the printer, your like, printer is off, Octoprint is on. So as soon as you turn on the printer, which I will simulate here by enabling the virtual printer. So save and quickly go back. The printer is now available and you see that Octo app basically automatically connects the printer. Um, on the watch and the phone. So it works exactly the same as on, on the phone. This is the ambient mode or the always on display uh, of the Wear OS app. So basically if you open the app and you wait until the screen turns off, that's basically what you will see. Um, this means, actually if you pause it, so we keep the printing state. Um, 
This means basically you can see up to four octoprint sensors and their current state. Mm, at the moment, like my test sensors are a bit weird, so the Beagle and Terrier instances uh, don't don't load. Um, but you see, Octopi and Charlotte are, are loaded, and that's basically how it will look like. Um, how this basically works is the app will refresh the state of all instances shown. So if it's only one, it's only one. If it's four, it's four in the background, um, roughly every five to 10 minutes. That depends a bit on uh, your Wear OS device and how often it wants to refresh. And yeah, basically it refreshes in a set interval, um, but it also refreshes for events. So for example, if we now resume the print, this will be an event and the watch will refresh instantly um, using a push notification. Um, and this requires the Octo app companion plugin to be installed on your Octopi instance, which is extremely important for the Wear OS app in general. Um, so you see that's the companion plugin and like the all connected um, devices. So I guess we are currently on one of those two, most likely this one. So that's our, our watch here. And when an event happens, we'll get push notification, which allows it to refresh immediately. So just do yourself a favor if you use the Wear OS app, just install the companion plugin. It will make many things much quicker. Uh, yeah, basically you also see your time. I think that's quite important for the watch. And uh, on the bottom, I also added the um, current battery charge state. And with that being my last uh, word, basically, mm, please be aware that using especially the, the always on display with Octo app, will like uh, use battery and will use more battery than if you just show it like your normal watch face. Um, I try to optimize that as much as possible. And generally I try to optimize the app as much as possible and I will continue to optimize everything to make everything a little bit quicker um, and more energy efficient, but it will consume battery power. And that's just how it is. Um, the watch is staying awake, it's making network requests um, so that's just the nature of things. Um, the basically battery consumption will be higher as if you just show the watch face. But I think it's a pretty cool feature. Um, it's very handy. And if you are aware that it will use battery power uh, and you can kind of like plan for it, mm, then that, I guess it's fine. Cool, now let me quickly show you the resume. So as soon as I resume, it will instantly, uh, should instantly go back, here we go, um, to the time left. Um, and the current battery, or uh, the, the current progress. Um, yeah, I guess that's most I can show of the Wear OS app for now. Um, I hope that was informative for you. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to just uh, write me email or reach out via the feedback options of the app. And um, yeah, that's it, I guess. Cool. Then as always, um, Enjoy the app and happy printing.